This video is going to talk about absolute values in equations and inequalities. So here's an absolute value, real rough sketch here, last minute change. But what I want you to notice is that when I have a y value, then we're going to say that an absolute value is equal to, let's say this is at 1. Okay, so the absolute value of something, we'll call it x, is equal to 1. But we also have the absolute value of negative x is also 1. Okay, so if I'm going to solve an absolute value, I really have to look at it as I'm trying to find out what's in here. So either x is going to be equal to 1, whatever's inside here is going to be equal to 1, or inside here. And that's represented by negative x is equal to 1. Okay, well we don't typically do it that way. We typically say yes, x is equal to 1, the original problem. But we, it doesn't matter which side the negative's on, just one side has to be negative. Say x is equal to negative 1. Same thing, we just chose to put the negative on the other side. So, let's see if we can solve a problem. We have to get to this absolute value all by itself first before we can do anything else. So we have to peel the layers of the onion. So I have to take the 14 to the other side and I have to divide by 3 as well. Let's just do it one step at a time. 3 times the absolute value of n minus 5 is going to be equal to 12 when I add 14 to negative 2. And then the absolute value of n minus 5 is going to be equal to 4 when I divide by 3. So that means that this n minus 5 could be a 4, or n minus 5 could be equal to negative 4. And then I take the absolute value of it, and I still get a 4. So let's see what we get. If we add 5, n is equal to 9. And if I add 5 here, n is equal to 1. Two answers. Both of those answers are what we need. Okay, so let's try again. Here we have the same thing. We need to take the 14 to the other side, and then we need to divide by negative 5. So the absolute value, oh, negative 5, sorry, times the absolute value of 2y is equal to, and adding 14, that'll be 20. And when we divide by negative 5, we have the absolute value of 2y is going to be equal to negative 4. And right now we have a problem because an absolute value cannot be equal to a negative numbers. Absolute values are always equal to a positive or zero. It's not equal to a positive or a negative, so with, we have no solution. Again, it's because of this wonderful little negative causes us to have this. If I have an absolute value that is less than some value, it implies that x is going to be between that negative k and positive k. And this is a nice little uh, thing to keep to help you remember. Less is nest. It's in between. It's going to be one interval. If x is greater than k, to have a absolute value graph, notice it was all above the x-axis. If it's a greater than k, some value, we're going to have k is less than negative k, x is greater than k. We drop the absolute value and write the same one, and then we take the x and multiply that k by negative 1, so we have to flip the inequality. More is or. So here we have an absolute value that is going to be less than or equal to some number. So it's going to be less is nest. We should end up with a nested interval. Same thing, got to add the 7, 5, q minus 2, less than or equal to 15 divide by 5, so the absolute value of q minus 2 is going to be less than or equal to 3. Drop the absolute value and write the inequality that you see, and then we're going to take the dropping the absolute value, and we're going to multiply neg negative 1 by 3, but since we multiply by negative, we have to switch the inequality. So let's solve. Adding 2, q is going to be less than or equal to 5, and adding 2 on this side, q is going to be greater than or equal to negative 1. Well, this is the smallest value, this is the largest value, and it's, it is bigger than the smallest, but it's less than the largest, so it really did nest. We would say q is, if I were writing it this way, is between negative 1 and 5. In an interval notation, that would say that we start at negative 1, and since it's a less than or equal to inequality, then I have a bracket because it equals and I go up to 5. 
Okay, so now we have to take this, it's already isolated, so we just have to take the two problems here. So m minus 1 is greater than 5, and then we're going to do m minus 1 is less than, so it's the inequality, change the sign. So when we do this one, we add 1 to both sides, so m is going to be greater than 6. And if I add 1 to this side, or both sides over here, then I'm going to have m is less than negative 4. If I think about that on a number line, just to show you the or idea, so I have my negative 4, and I have my 6, and it's greater than 6, so that's going to go this way, and it's less than negative 4, so that's going to go this way. So you can see there's a gap in the middle, so we do have an or. It goes from negative infinity to negative 4, and it doesn't include either one, because my inequality doesn't. Union, and then it starts back up at 6 to infinity. Now before I go on, I want to show you how we could use this using a calculator. And I want to solve the equation equal to 5, and I want to do the inequality. But it's all done with the same graph. So to do that, first you need to get into your y equals screen, then get to math, and arrow over to number, and you see this says ABS, so absolute value is what that means. So you press enter and it takes us back to the y equals screen. And then I just put in what I have. I have x minus 1 inside my absolute value. And then close it so the parentheses are like the bars and that we normally see. And then I'm going to break my second equation be the other side. And that would be the 5. So I'm going to do zoom 6 to make sure I'm in a standard window. And I'm going to see this graph. Now, if it were equal, then I would need to know what these two points right here were. That's where those two things are equal. So I want to find the intersection. So second, trace, and then five, and you can do enter, 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 and that will give you the first one. And that's negative four. We should have expected that. And then we do second, trace, five, but this time we have to get to the other side of our vertex, or it will keep giving us the same answer. And I'm going to go up to look at y2 because that's a straight line. It will get me over there quicker. And I get over to the other side of my vertex. And then I can just press enter, enter, enter. And I find out that x is equal to 6. Now if I'm talking about the inequality, now I want to know when my absolute value is greater than 5. So I'm just going to sketch this on my paper here and then we can do some coloring. So I have a graph that looks something like this. This is x equal negative 4, and this is x equal 6, and we want to know when the v is going to be greater than the 5, which is in the blue. So when will this be greater? Well, the, this is the 5 here. This line is x equal 5, and I want it, the red one to be greater, the y values to be bigger, which means they're higher as I look at my graph. So I'm going to have this over here, and I'm going to have this over here. And so now you can see that this over here is negative infinity up to the negative 4 as I go from left to right. And then I have a union because I have the blue space in the middle, but then my circle again over here starts back up at 6 and goes to infinity. Last problem here. So add 8 to both sides, so the absolute value of 5u minus 3 is going to be greater than negative 2. Well earlier we said that an absolute value couldn't be equal to a negative 2, but an absolute value can be greater than negative 2. In fact, this absolute value is always a positive value, so it will always be greater than negative 2, so we would say that it goes from negative infinity to infinity.